But wait! You know what else looks sleek utilizes a glass and aluminum frame? The P30. Some little things that I notice are the Nova 5T is slightly taller but you only really notice when both phones are in hand. And the P30 gets an IP53 dust and splash rating. At the back of both devices, you can find their main cameras. You get a quad camera setup for the 5T and a triple camera setup for the P30. Both camera modules are placed on the top left corner stacked vertically. In front, the Nova 5T gets a punch hole situated on the top left corner as well. In it resides the front facing camera. The P30 on the other hand utilizes a dewdrop notch. For I.O., the Nova 5T gets a noise-canceling mic for speakerphone and a light and proximity sensor found on top. The dual SIM card tray is on the left, the volume rocker and power key that doubles as a fingerprint sensor on the right, and at the bottom is a mic for regular calls, a USB Type-C port, and a single downward-firing speaker. For the P30, up top is a noise-canceling mic for speakerphone, the volume rocker and accented power button on the right, the hybrid dual SIM card tray can be found on the left, and at the bottom is a 3.5mm audio jack, mic for regular calls, a USB Type-C port, and a single downward firing speaker as well. So my verdict in terms of design, which let me remind you guys, is the most subjective part of this review, it's the Nova 5T. Yeah, some say it's basically an S10e copy paste, but what's wrong with that? I can also see some people being more swayed to the P30 due to the Nova 5T lacking a 3.5mm audio jack, but I personally did not find it to be a problem. For display, the Nova 5T utilizes a 6.26 inch Full HD Plus IPS LCD panel with a resolution of 2340 by 1080 and a pixel density of 412 pixels per inch. The P30 gets a 6.1 inch Full HD Plus OLED display with a resolution of 2340 by 1080 as well, but with a slightly higher pixel density of 422 pixels per inch. And honestly, you won't really see much of a difference because of the pixel density. It's really more of an argument between IPS LCD and OLED. For example, when it comes to media consumption, I definitely prefer the punch hole treatment on the Nova 5T compared to the dewdrop notch found on the P30. But I like the deeper blacks and slightly more punchy colors of the latter. Then again, the IPS panel will most likely last longer than the OLED one, so it's kind of a mixed bag for me. So for display, it's going to be a tie. For audio quality from those single downward firing speakers, they both have a similar sound signature but I do feel like the Nova 5T has a little bit more of a punch in the low end than the P30. I do think it's worth mentioning at this point that the Nova 5T does not get a 3.5mm audio jack while the P30 does. So I can definitely see consumers choosing between these two devices getting swayed by the P30 just because of this. Checking out performance now. For hardware, under the hood of both devices is a high silicone Kirin 980 chipset. Users can expect a Mali G76 MP10 GPU paired with that octa-core processor. For configurations, officially in our local market, the Nova 5T gets 8 gigs of RAM while the P30 gets 6 gigs. And they also share the same internal storage capacity of 128 gigabytes. You do get expandable storage of up to 256 gigs for the P30, but do note that you'll need to use Huawei's proprietary nano memory cards for this instead of that good old micro SD card. For software, both devices get Android 9 Pie out of the box, skinned with EMUI 9.1 on top. Now, EMUI isn't our favorite skin, but it's not like it isn't functional. There's a reason Huawei was able to climb itself to the top of the food chain, and we're pretty sure a lot of people love EMUI for its relatively clean and customizable interface. Either way, both these devices can practically handle anything you throw at it, from simply browsing the web to editing photos to heavy gaming. When it comes to benchmarks, the Nova 5T fares very well with the P30 right from the get-go. Though, the moment we switch to performance mode on the 5T, it starts to give the P30 a run for its money. So overall, for performance, we're calling it a tie because the Nova 5T can surely keep up and surpass the P30's numbers in performance mode, but in its default state, the P30 takes the cake. Though at the end of the day, rest assured that both these devices can handle everything we throw at them. Checking out them batteries, the Nova 5T gets a 3750 mAh cell, while the P30 gets a 3650 mAh one. They both get support for Huawei's 22.5W supercharge, and surprisingly, it took around 2 hours for the 5T to charge up from 0 to 100, and only an hour for the P30. When it came to putting both devices in our standard video loop test, the Nova 5T provided us with 15 hours of playback, while the P30 gave us 20 hours hours and 12 minutes. That is surprising to see as well due to the 5T getting a slightly bigger milliamp hour capacity, although our guess is that the P30's OLED display gives it an edge in saving for battery consumption. So for battery, we obviously have to give it to the P30. 
For security, we get face unlock and fingerprint scanners on both devices. The Nova 5T gets a side mounted fingerprint scanner that doubles as the power button. The P30, on the other hand, gets a Gen 2 optical in display one. They're both fairly quick for both unlocking options. Of course, the face unlock will fare best in good lighting conditions. Nonetheless, the Nova 5T takes the cake for recognition speed in both the fingerprint and face unlock. Checking out the cameras now, the Nova 5T utilizes a quad camera setup at the rear. It's composed of a 48 megapixel main shooter, a 16 megapixel ultra wide, a 2 megapixel depth sensor, and a 2 megapixel macro lens. The P30 features Leica optics with its triple camera setup composed of a 40 megapixel main shooter, a 16 megapixel ultra wide, and an 8 megapixel telephoto. The P30 also features a dual tone flash and laser autofocus, which the Nova 5T does not have. In both devices' respective punch hole and notch resides the same 32 megapixel sensor. The Nova 5T's front-facing shooter supports gyro electronic image stabilization that could possibly make vlogging on the device better than on the P30. Checking out some sample photos now. In this first shot of myself, we can clearly see right off the bat that the Nova 5T's post-processing prefers a cooler white balance over the P30's warmer image. Here we have a photo of our favorite Coca-Cola beetle, and here we notice the P30 gets a little bit of a haze in its image, while the Nova 5T appears a tad bit sharper and more saturated. Next, we have the Skyway going south. In this photo, it's very clear now that these devices have slight differences when it comes to color reproduction. You can easily see this in the greens and the sky. I do think it's worth mentioning that the P30 produces an overall more flat image compared to the Nova 5T's more saturated look. Dynamic range is also on par for these two. The same assessment can be made here as well in both devices ultrawide. Though, we do want to mention that the P30's ultrawide does have a slightly wider field of view. Checking out portrait mode real quick, we have wax here. Subject background separation is almost perfect for both images. If we zoom into the top of his head, some of his hair didn't make the cut. Though overall, portrait mode on both these devices are very much on par, with the slight exception of the P30 getting a more natural looking bokeh. Now here we have Kath taking a selfie. As you can see, the same comments in regards to both devices post-processing can be observed here as well. And while we're on the topic again, I do feel like the Nova 5T produces a slightly more color accurate image than the P30. Now if we zoom into her face and switch on beauty mode, we see that the Nova 5T's smoothing is slightly more aggressive than the P30's, making the 5T's image appear a little bit overdone when next to the P30's. For night mode, here's a shot in the default photo mode for reference. We can already see here that the P30 handles low light better than the Nova 5T. With night mode on, the Nova 5T's image does a lot better compared to its reference photo and can totally keep up with the P30. But of course, it still can't trump the Low Light King's sharpness and clarity. Taking things indoors with AJ, and again, these photos are first taken in the default photo mode for reference. This is with night mode. Obviously, we get that contrast boost from both devices, but it's overall handled better with the P30. The noise reduction on the Nova 5T also did much more poor in comparison. The thing is, the color reproduction from the Nova 5T also appears more natural, which we prefer. Though overall for cameras in this case, it'd be blasphemy to say that the Nova 5T performed better than the P30. But if you want more natural color reproduction, the 5T gets that one over the winner of this category. Before we conclude this comparison, we gotta talk about price. The Huawei Nova 5T gets a price tag of 18,990 pesos, that's for the 8 gigs of RAM and 128 gigs of internal storage. The Huawei P30 on the other hand gets the same internal storage capacity with 6 gigs of RAM and an SRP of 36,990 pesos. That's a great looking difference for you Nova 5T fans. For a fraction of the P30's cost, you can get the same chipset under the hood, slightly better sound quality, a quad camera setup that gets pretty close to Huawei's P-series Leica optic sensors. So, what did you guys think of this smartphone comparison? Nova 5T or P30? Let us know in the comments section below. And if you enjoyed this video, be sure to smack that like button, subscribe to our YouTube channel, and hit that bell icon so you get notified of future uploads. Be sure to visit yukitech.com for the latest tech news and reviews. Again, this has been Miguel, and I'll see you in the next one.